Herbert's hundred harem. So there I was trying to figure out how to rub the cream off my little girl with the poisonous spines. Unfortunately, Paris and cream doesn't wash away in the water as it's designed to accommodate aquatic and amphibious species. So I had to figure a way to wipe down the wiggly little goof before she flopped around too much and got the cream in her gills. Isma apparently has an entire laundry list of silly things her children have done and she was three stories in with no sign of slowing down. They had gotten to the entire crowd and it was a little odd for Herbert to not find himself instantly the center of their attention. Of course, when you're playing second fiddle to a living legend and cultural icon, it's fairly easy to go around without being personally noticed. What is Paris and Cream? One of the girls asks. I'm not surprised you don't know it. It's a topical cream for aquatic races to help adjust to new aquatic environments. Axiom may do most of the work, but there's still a lot of itching and irritation for a fresh water aka to go into salt water and vice versa, especially as the Axiom concentrates the most on the internals, survival being important and all. Okay, so a non-water soluble skin cream on wriggly little girl covered in toxic barbs. With how tough you are, I doubt that would be the end of it. There had to be more for this to be worth a story, Herbert notes, and Yzma waves her hand dismissively. Of course. Now the real problem was she was four years old at the time and was very far ahead of the curve when it came to using Axiom, which she was almost visible channeling into her barbs. This meant that not only would they get through my kitten if I wasn't careful, but it was also enhancing her venom to dangerous levels. I gave a spine an experimental squeeze from a safe angle, and the poison that came out started to eat through hull plating. It had turned into a deadly acid, not unlike what those silly movies thought Zayden blood is like. Holy shit, Herbert mutters under his breath. So the best way I handled all of this was that I held her up by the tail in one hand, grabbed both of her hands with my two right hands, and then grabbed the lid from the Paris and cream jar she had emptied and used it to scrape off as much of the cream as I could and get it back in the jar. Then, still holding on, I got a cloth and wiped off the rest. You reused it? Wasn't it dirty? One of the girls asks. Well, I only needed the cream for her. She was the only AKA I had in my home at the time, so it wasn't like that cream was going on anyone else. Isma explains as the girls finish paying up and then she smiles over them all. Now, who wants a few practical lessons in hunting? Um, the ticket seller and administrator nearby starts to say, non-lethal and we will clean up after ourselves, I promise, Isma assures her. Okay, she says uncertainly, but the woman clearly doesn't want to get in an argument with the ancient hunt's mistress and grand matriarch. Are you girls ready for some real fun? She asks as she pulls out a series of packages and begins tossing them around. Your jobs are to set up these snares as best as you can, as hidden as you can, and then find a way to lure me into them. Interesting. Herbert notes as one of them is tossed his way and everyone walks back into defenestration nation. His visor takes a few snapshots automatically as Control wants to have this properly recorded. Inside is a spool of thin string, similar to a fishing line, a carabiner, pair of hooked bungees, and what seems to be a small packet of paint. The obvious answer is to set up a tripwire anchored with the bungee and set to launch the paint with the bungees when tripped. He reads the chemical list on the paint. Water soluble, Washes easily and so non-toxic, it's technically fully edible, but far from tasty. His is neon purple. The girls break off into groups of five to ten to work together and pool resources. More bungees, carabineers, and paint means they can do far more. Herbert, for his part, gives Yzma a grin that she matches. She's paying attention to him. This is his fourth test. First, she tried to catch him. Then she had him try to catch her before testing his responses with a trap. Finally was the hunt and now this. Technically five, but the second and third were part of the same chase. 
He adds a few teeth to the grin and vanishes in a teleport to prepare. It takes him about a minute to set up the trap and then he simply waits. There's no way in hell she'll hit a trip wire and she will want to test him, which means he's the best bait. But the trap can't be set off by anything she does. She'll see right through it, so he needs to set it off himself. With everything set up, all he has to do is wait. He doesn't have to wait long, however. Yzma shows herself after a few minutes with a smile on her face as she lowers herself from the ceiling. Herbert casually breaks the line, but as he's also sitting on it, it doesn't go anywhere, which is good as Yzma dodges the moment he cuts the line and then crawls back in as nothing happens. Trap failure, she asks, and he shrugs with a rueful smile before holding up his hand to be helped up. She does so, and he grabs on to hold her in place while releasing the tension on the line. The bungee slingshot forward and slam the paint package onto her back, even though she cuts them with her tail without even looking. Very good. Thank you. Herbert says as he now uses her grip to stand fully upright and smiles. There was no way that I could get you with the obvious tripwire. No way that I could actually hit someone as fast as you with a trap you set off and no way you wouldn't test me. So I had to be part of the trap. Very good. The first thing about trapping someone is understanding your opponents. You seem to understand a fair bit about Zedon psychology too, so you knew I would come from above. She then turns to regard the now obvious trap. From above, the trap is hidden. But if I came from below, I would have seen it. I could only hide it from so many directions, so I had to make a choice, Herbert says, and she nods. You know, you're already at the level where it's mostly experience or a lot more force than is safe to train you further. She notes and he grins. If you're willing to speak with my bosses, they'll be able to arrange just that. After all, there are entire hunting worlds, aren't there? Herbert asks and then gets a message across his visor. I just saw something in your lens, she notes. Yes, they want me to continue on this path, although I think more than one person is on the controls at the moment, Herbert says as he rises up his visor and lets it rest on his forehead. There were at least three people trying to get him to do different things, and hopefully in a minute or two, they will have calmed the hell down enough to give him a proper order rather than gibberish. Think you got them excited. The luster of going from world to world still hasn't worn off yet. Personally, I hope it never does, Herbert says. And Isma lets out a little hum of contentment. Oh, some people get grouchy when they have to go from place to place. But if you just remember that you have a home to return to, then things turn out all right, she says, putting a hand on his shoulder, one that she had apparently been wiping the purple paint off with. He gives it a pointed look and she laughs. A little reminder that even if you get someone in a trap, they can still get you back. Noted, Herbert says with a chuckle before flipping down his visor. All right, let's see if the debates have ended. And the verdict is, Isma asks. Not only are we going on a vacation, but they'll provide transport and in return, I just need to keep the visor on and record while hunting make a proper report when done and bring back some trophies. Sounds doable, doesn't it? Herbert asks, and he can see the axiom play across her carapace as she nearly bursts with joy. He just made the woman's day. Come on, let's go test the girls and see how well they're doing. We have a few hunt mistress hopefuls, but I want to see how well you deal with traps on your own, she says, and he nods. Sure, how many tests are there anyways? Herbert asks as he picks up all the pieces of his trap and pockets them. Life is a test. Everything is a test. There is no end to them, and that's wonderful, isn't it? There's always another challenge to prove yourself against, she says, and he can only smile. The woman's not part of the nation, but she's clearly undaunted. Good answer. Let's find out if anyone else set up something beyond a basic tripwire. Herbert says, and she gladly nods before leaping away with Axiom help, vanishing mid-arc and then suddenly reappearing on a distant building. He then twists the Axiom and is abruptly beside her again. 
There is a slight twitch that suggests she had to rein in the instinct to deck him for teleporting right next to her. She points downwards and he crouches down on the roof before hanging upside down. He adjusts the visor and sees things thermally to confirm what he can sense in the axiom. There are ten of his girls in there trying to weave a net out of the string. They've clearly put way too much thought into this. Are you trying to catch a fish? He cannot help himself and there are squeals of shock and dismay as Isma fights down her giggles. Girls, simplicity is an elegance all its own, Isma calls down to them. There is some increased temperature around their cheeks to show that they're a little embarrassed and Herbert decides to let up. All right, I think we've been mean enough. Let's go, Herbert says out loud so everyone can hear him. Is it wrong that I feel like I may be poaching you? Isma asks as they head for the next group on foot and Herbert gives her an odd look before shrugging. I'm not being trained to be Sir Philip's underling. I'm being trained as his replacement. You training me up too? That just makes it better. Madam Stepanova being sent out to verify facts and deciding after she gets that confirmation to add her own brand of skills and knowledge to me as well? That just makes sense. Right now, my main job is to be a student. If another teacher is added in, then that just means I have another teacher. It doesn't mean I'm no longer a student of one of my two teachers. I see, that's good though. I was worried about stepping on toes. You never quite know when some race will suddenly see something as a massive threat and move against you. It's a fun little reminder that no matter how rational and reasonable a person is, they are still just beasts with minds, as beholden to their biology and instinct as any other living thing no matter how much you try to dress it up. Isma says and Herbert chuckles. What's so funny? It's how I got you remember? You're larger than me. I have less in the way of claws and fangs than even a Zedin newborn. I looked harmless that let me bait you right into my trap. Your own instincts betrayed you, he says, and she pauses before laughing. You're making it very hard to be a teacher. The tools I need to actually give you some truly impactful training aren't on a world as tame and safe as Centris. Not as tame or safe as you think. From what I've observed, all worlds are deadly if you're not aware of the danger. I won't do more than mention falling off a spire, but I will bring up the innumerable criminal gangs, rampant corruption and unending secret societies and conspiracies. There are so many harmless ones they serve as perfect camouflage to the lethal ones and some of the things I've personally dealt with are blood chillingly vile. Such as, hang on a moment, I need to ask permission, he says before switching to English. Control, may I bring up the Persona Spike incidents? He has only a few moments to get an answer. No names, feel free otherwise. All right then, he says once more in galactic trade. The names will not be included, but we've run into a criminal gang that are willing to and have used powerful Kutha artifacts to instantly brainwash innocent civilians, turning their hostages into their most brutal enforcers stripping the lives and will away from young girls to turn them into living horrors without any knowledge of the atrocities their hands are being made to commit on an almost nightly basis. Please tell me the woman responsible is dead, Yzma says. Dead and her entire empire was shattered in our wake. Her victims are saved and now protected. Her resources have been stolen and before she died, she begged for an end. Herbert says, giving Yzma a very solid look. There's no malice, but there is a sheer certainty in it. She holds his gaze for a bit before altering her stance to fully take in the depth of that gaze. She then nods. Good, very good. If someone makes an enemy of your family, I can be harsher. Herbert promises and she nods. Good, 